Good morning everyone, it's Tuesday the 17th of January 2022. Sorry it's been a while since I last made a video, I've been uh, tangled up doing absolutely nothing. Uh, but anyway, I've got a few updates coming for you, so there should be a few videos launching across across the next few days, just as quick as I can make them all. This particular video is giving you an overview of the Give Energy app, uh, specifically on an iPhone. Uh, it's an iPhone 13 mini running the latest iOS 15 operating system. All right, so let's get cracking. So I've launched the app on my phone and it takes a few seconds to load up and it presents you this Give Energy logo while you're waiting and it immediately launches you into the home screen, which is what this is. Before I explain these features, um, I'll just talk about the hamburger that you see at the top. There is absolutely nothing in that menu. When you first get access, which is given to you by your installers, they'll tell you what your user ID and your password is. You enter that into the app and that's it. All you can see in that hamburger menu is the serial number of my device and my user ID. So if I go back to talking about the home screen, this is the diagram that you're presented with when you first launch it, and it shows you the energy flow around your house. So it's currently quarter to 10 in the morning, and at the moment my solar array is producing 1.8 kilowatts. Uh, you can see that by the, the top circular icon there um, with the kind of yellow glow around it. And in the middle, my house with the green glow is drawing 0 0.7 kilowatts. So you can see the little kind of um, blob of energy traveling from the solar array at the top uh, down to the middle, uh, that basically telling you that the solar array is providing the power to the house. Now, the, the solar array is producing more energy than my house is currently drawing. So the surplus energy is being sent to the Give Energy battery that we have. And you can see the difference there in the numbers. 1.1 kilowatt is being sent to the battery. At this moment in time, the house is not drawing any electricity from the grid, which you can see um, from the icon on the bottom right hand side. Um, and also no energy is flowing to or from the grid at this moment in time. OK, so we are completely green right now. And in fact, we're generating extra uh, to go in our battery and save it up for a later point in time. Now, in the event that our battery was full and you were generating 1.8 kilowatts and the house was drawing 0.7, what you could then do, then do is export the surplus energy to the grid. And then you would see a blob traveling from the solar array at the top uh, down the outer ring on the right-hand side to the grid. If you guys have a um, nighttime tariff, for example, Octopus Go, where you can uh, get cheap electricity overnight, you may well want to charge up your battery overnight so that you can use that cheap energy during the day. And if that was the case, what you would then see is from the grid icon on the bottom right, you would see a blob traveling on that outer ring across to your battery to charge it up. Okay, so this is the, the visual diagram of um, that you get from Give Energy on the home tab. There's, there's, there's nothing you can do. You can't click on this and interact with it. It's just something to look at. Now, the data that you see here only refreshes once every five minutes. So you can see the last update was just over four minutes ago when we launched the app. Um, it's really annoying that you can't see anything more specific. Give Energy are able to see data every five seconds. If you contact them to troubleshoot for some reason, then they can see more detailed data. They have the ability to capture that. But unfortunately, that information is not av made available to the customer at the moment. So um, basically, if you want an update to this diagram, which we'll do in a little bit, you can um, swipe down to refresh. Um, but if you do it in a time frame which is less than five minutes, the numbers won't change. You need to let it get to about five minutes and 10 seconds, and then you'll see uh, some sort of update. Moving across to the next tab at the bottom, which is all about the battery, you get a visual representation of the battery charge at the top. Uh, so like I said, given that it's um, quarter to 10 in the morning, my battery has only just begun to charge up. So it had been completely depleted yesterday afternoon, evening, and so it's charging up from about three to five percent. Give energy don't allow it to drain to zero percent uh, to help prolong the life of the battery. Um, on this battery that I've got, it is possible to get it to drain to zero. Um, you just need to contact Give, Give Energy so they can enable that setting. My understanding is that drain to zero option is only available on the 8.2 kilowatt battery. It's not yet available on the smaller ones, um, but that may well change. So my battery has been charging up since about half past eight in the morning when we started to generate surplus 
solar energy. And at this point in time, it's got itself to 11%. The little graph at the bottom, you can see um, during the overnight hours, the battery was doing absolutely nothing. Um, it wasn't charging because I haven't got it to charge up um, from the grid overnight and it wasn't providing any power either. As you get to kind of half past eight, nine o'clock in the morning, you can see the surplus energy is starting to go into the battery and the battery then presents you with a negative line below the curve. That, that means it's charging up. And as the house um, like required energy, for example, that spike that you see there is us turning the kettle on. So the battery is then providing that power to drive the kettle. And after, you know, after a minute when the kettle's turned off, the battery goes back to um, charging itself up. The next tab is a power graph, and this shows you um, how the power is moving around your home. So it's quite a messy graph. So what I'm going to do is switch off all the lines and then turn them on one by one and explain them as I go. So first of all, let's talk about the solar generation. OK, so that's the yellow line. So I'm going to click on the yellow um, icon just to see the yellow graph. So you can see overnight the solar array is generating nothing and we get to about eight o'clock in the morning when the sun comes up at the moment and then the array starts to generate power. Um, you can see in, in that space that we've got there it quickly ramps up to one kilowatt and then up to two kilowatts um, at kind of half past nine, not even ten o'clock kind of time frame. The next is the consumption by the house. So I click on the green icon and the green graph that you see here now, the green line is what my house is consuming. So you see in the overnight hours that I'm consuming roughly a steady amount, and then you get a spike just before 7 a.m., another one just after, and another one at 9. So this is probably the kettle coming on. Moving on to the next one, which is the battery, the white one. So if I click on that button, what you see here is, again, the battery was doing nothing overnight, so it's flatlined at zero. And once we get to 8.30, 9 o'clock and the solar array is generating surplus, the white line goes negative, and that uh, indicates that the battery is now charging up and storing energy. You can see um, at 9 o'clock when the kettle turned on, the white line spikes to match the green line. So that's basically indicating that the battery is providing the energy to power that spike in energy for the kettle, which reaches you know close to 4 kilowatts for that, that fraction in time. And after that minute's passed or whatever, then the, then the battery goes back to charging itself up. Finally, if we look at the blue line, so this is power coming from the grid, you can see that um, the blue line below the graph is pretty constant and it matches the green line above the graph for the majority. And that's indicating that whatever power our house is drawing overnight, all that energy is currently being provided by the grid. Okay. Um, before the sun comes up at you know quarter to seven and eight o'clock or whatever time that is, those two spikes that you see there are completely serviced by energy from the grid. In the last last portion, what you can see there is that as we start to generate surplus, the blue line has flatlined, so we're not drawing any power from the grid at the moment, and all the energy is being produced by the solar, and we are servicing our house and putting the excess into the battery at the moment. The other tab over here doesn't really contain any information or it doesn't work. I never even look at it, so I'm going to skip over that. But it's basically the same information provided to you in bar graphs in a, in a different kind of fashion. Moving on to the last tab, which is the settings. So it's, it's pretty simple. Basically, the system can run in four different modes. Give energy advice to leave it on dynamic, which is like their smart mode. They'll, they'll kind of decide what's best in terms of should the battery charge up, should the battery discharge, should the battery you know, kind of service your needs during the day um, or save up all the energy and do it for nighttime. Um, if you want to override this, you can and switch it into one of the other modes. So, for example, you can choose to tell the battery just to charge up. But if your house is drawing demand, pull it from the grid and save that battery use for, you know, maybe the, the hours of darkness. You can tell the battery in mode three just to discharge at a given time. If you know that's how you want to operate or if that's useful to you, or you can tell it to export all of that energy and push it out to the grid. Um, you know, you, you, you might have a tariff or you might have one of those um, tariffs from Octopus Go where you're going to get paid a fortune by exporting energy. And you might want to dump it all into the grid to make some money, um, something like that. Finally, if you have a smart tariff from your energy provider, you can configure that in the app. 
so that the battery then takes advantage of charging up um, when the electricity is cheap and uh, maybe exporting when it's expensive. And then finally, the last setting there is, I think it's in relation to having an electric vehicle. You can tell the app, um, make the battery do certain stuff, you know, to, to your electric vehicle, like charge up at a specific time, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So that's basically all there is in this app. It's pretty thin. 99% um, of the time, all I do is look at the home tab. So if I flick back over there now, you can see that the energy consumption has changed slightly in my property. We're producing 1.7 kilowatts. So the, there's a tiny little cloud which has come over the array, but the house is also drawing less. We were drawing 0 0.7 before, and now we're drawing 0 0.5. So that net means that we are producing an excess of 1.2 kilowatts. Um, it was 1.1 a little bit earlier on. And so that entire 1.2 kilowatts is going into the battery. And still, we're not drawing anything from the grid and we're not pushing anything to the grid. Now I have um, smart meters provided by my energy company. So we have that little display that they give you and they're installing everyone's homes. And when I look at that, you know, it confirms that we are drawing zero from the grid. It does, it does fluctuate, you know, kind of pops up from zero watts to like 40, 50, 60 watts sometimes, just for a fraction of a second and then goes down. Um, I, I think I'm learning that this entire system um, is, is not as fast at ramping up and ramping down if your house suddenly requires energy. It's good at smoothing it out. So if you switch something on, that instant requirement for power can't always be serviced by the battery. And so just to kind of keep the lights on, so to speak, it momentarily pulls power from the grid until the battery ramps up its discharge rate to fully take over. And I believe the same thing happens when you turn something off. If you have um, excess energy, then the system doesn't appear to be able to take it all immediately and dump it into the battery. At moment, it uses the grid as like a sponge, as a buffer, just to smooth out the rate of charge and discharge. All right, but in a nutshell, that is basically all there is to say about the Give Energy app. Um, it does work. It's very nice. It's uh, easy to understand. I only ever look at this home screen. I don't bother with the other screens. Um, the battery charge rate is lower in the middle of winter. It's currently, you know, it's January, so we don't get that much sunlight and we're certainly not producing enough excess to fully charge this battery uh, yet. On top of that, our house does seem to consume a lot of power um, during the course of a day. We're probably going through about 17 to 20 kilowatts every day. Um, so in order to service that and then put another 8 kilowatts in the battery, the solar array would need to be producing 25 to 30 kilowatts of power every day. And in the middle of winter, that is just not going to happen for us. Okay, so, so far, so good. Um, we've had the Give Energy system running for about two months now. And in that time, it's tripped up twice. So first of all, when it was installed, the system didn't seem to want to charge the battery. I had to contact Give Energy because my installers kind of just left it and went. And Give Energy took a few days and figured out what the problem was and sent through a firmware update. Since they did that, everything was working perfectly. Last week, it appeared to do the same thing again. The, we had sunny days and the battery didn't seem to want to charge. And instead, it was saying that we're exporting to the grid. So again, I contacted Give Energy Technical Support. And they're pretty good. Um, a chap over there kind of looked at it, said something's not right, and said he'll work on it. And that evening, he tinkered with some settings. And the next day, I noticed that the battery started to charge again. He, he was going to continue to work on it. But when I told him it's already working, he said, well, in that case, I'll, I'll keep an eye on it, but I'll leave it alone and let me know how it goes. So it's been working perfectly fine since then. So I decided that there's no point asking him to tinker with it anymore because it's, you don't want to lose the, the energy that you're generating on sunny days. And you can't experiment if you haven't got excess energy because you don't actually know if it's working properly and if the excess is going to go into the battery. So from my point of view, it seems to be working. I'm going to leave it alone. That's the only kind of negative point I've got to say, really, that it's tripped up twice. But the positive is that Give Energy have been very quick to get on top of it and try and try and resolve it and push through a firmware update. And um, they keep you in the loop. They drop you emails or give you a call to say, look, they've got this far. This is what they want to do. It's OK to push through a firmware update, etc., etc. Um, and the other, you know, only negative point I've got here is I wish that we had access to the data and the information um, on more than a five minute interval. 
you know, I would love to see that five second update. I would love to have um, a section in this app where you could get access to that raw data so that you could you know, download it and do whatever analysis you wanted on it. Okay, well, that's a summary of the Give Energy app. I hope this uh, is helpful for you. And let's, uh, let's move on to the next video.